indigestion, when your stomach's doing jumps and bumps, I use Rolaids. <laughs> Trying to get that order. Boy, you have coffee with the buyers. I've had as many as four, five cups of coffee before lunch. It can give you a burning feeling, but you'll lose it when you take Rolaids. So if somebody else wants a cup of coffee, you can stand it. Nice surprise for you. Oh, huh? what surprise? We have invited a very, very important person to dinner. Well, that's just fine if it's for next week. If it's for tonight, you're in trouble. I'm in trouble. <laughs> Daddy, you mean you invited someone for dinner tonight? Oh, well, honestly, why do you do these things? I, I have to make a thousand preparations. I just can't slap any old thing together. All right, all right, sweetheart. Okay, it's going to be that much trouble. I'll call Frank and tell him not to come. Well, you just better do that. Okay. Frank who? Sinatra. You cancel that dinner and I'll kill you. Frank <laughs> Sinatra's coming here? Uh -huh. My hair! My hair behind my face! Oh, what are we gonna do? Well, uh, I have a solution. We'll put your hair on her face. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, Mom, uh, can I borrow a pair of your pantyhose? Huh? Uh, thanks. Oh. oh. Michael, will you take these things upstairs and, and, and I'll pack them? <laughs> oh, Danny, I'll just kill you. Oh, I've got for dinner a hamburgers. So what's the matter with that? How do you serve Frank Sinatra hamburgers? On a bun with ketchup and onions. <laughs> right. well, what time is he coming? 6.30. Well, what time is it now? 6.30. Oh, no! Oh, oh. Boy, when he wants to eat, he wants to eat. <laughs> Frank! Here's the man himself. It's my wife, Kathy. Hello, Kathy. <laughs> Delighted to meet you. Oh, he kissed me. Well, that's really your girl, aren't you? I am. I mean, I'm, I'm pleased to be... Uh, we're only having hamburgers. I love hamburgers, especially with ketchup and onion. <laughs> well, 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 won't you sit down? Thank you. Well, you'll have to forgive me, Frank, but for, for a minute I was back at the old Paramount Theater standing in line waiting to get in to see you. If I had known that, I would have gone out and brought you in. Oh, why can't you ever say things like that? What say? I'm the guy who went out and brought you in. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> down and uh, perceive our guest here. <laughs> this is our daughter, Linda. Hello, Linda. Frank Sinatra. Oh, you don't have to introduce me, Dad. Mr. Sinatra's a legend. <laughs> what a charming thing to say. He's wearing Grandma's underwear. <laughs> <laughs> Who is that? <laughs> That's our, our grandson, Michael. <laughs> Who you may never see again, because I might just go upstairs and kill him. Oh, don't let him upset you, Linda. When my kids were little, we had problems like that every day in the week. <laughs> you look ravishing. Whose heart are you going to break tonight? Oh, my own. What's that? Oh, well, you're here and I have to leave. I've got to go to a friend's house and study for a big test tomorrow. The lucky boy. Phyllis? <laughs> Phyllis? <laughs> Excuse me, I guess. <laughs> Sit down, Frank. Yeah. Hello? Oh, yes, Mr. Sinatra's here. It's long distance. Excuse me. Uh, Riviera, French Riviera. Well, Kathy, I hope you don't mind. I had my exchange. Put all the calls over here, maybe. Not at all. Hello? Riviera. Yes, let's see. <laughs> Bridget! Comment ça va? Ça va? Good, good. 
No, no, I can't. I can't. No. I gave the pilot a few days off and told him to take the plane to go and have a good time for himself. No, I can't next week either. Now I'm playing in a, in a marvelous golf tournament in Palm Springs. Very big one, yeah. No, but as soon as I can, I'll call you, okay? All right. Au revoir, ma chérie. Goodbye. Ta-ta. <laughs> Bridget. Bridget. No, no, it's another Bridget. Oh, that's too bad. Dear, it's his loss, not yours. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Hello? <clears throat> oh, yes. Yes, he's here. Long distance. Rome. <laughs> Italy. Hello? Yeah, this is Mr. Sinatra. Oh, Gina! How are you as a feel today? That's so nice, the good, the good. No, I'm kidding. Uh, I, I hate to have to pay his phone bills. He hasn't paid for one call. Doesn't he have any men friends? No one's ever found out. No, but I really can't. But in a couple of weeks, maybe, I'm going to be on the French Riviera, and it's a quick hop over to Rome. Then I can come over to see you, and we'll have some fun, okay? All right, Gina, ciao. Goodbye. Gina, Gina Banducci. It's a, another one. <laughs> you may as well get it. It's got to be for you. <laughs> Hello? Oh, yeah, just a minute. He's here. See you, Dan. For me? Local. <laughs> Hello? Oh, oh, gee, I'm glad you called. Yes. Yeah. Uh-huh. Oh, any time you say. Tomorrow will be great. Fine. See you then. I'll be the same. <laughs> Who was that? Schultz, the plumber. <laughs> Can I give you a hand, Irish? No, thanks. Everything's all set. Good. You didn't leave Frank out there all alone, did you? No, he's upstairs with Michael. With Michael? Yeah. I was putting him to bed and Frank offered to sing him to sleep. Isn't that cute? Don't tell Linda. Or we shall perceive a teenage daughter who'll kill herself. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And when somebody needs you, it's no good unless he needs you. All the way. Through the good old lean years and for so good, do I? I guess they don't. <laughs> you know, honey, mm. in a way, I feel sorry for him. You feel sorry for Frank Sinatra? Well, everywhere he goes, all those women are hounding him. <laughs> what kind of a life is that to live? Oh, just the kind of life any red-blooded man would give his eye teeth to live. <laughs> and pray tell, what color is your blood? Pink. <laughs> I wonder how he does it. Hey, you know, some 
you're really curious about the way this man lives. Why don't you just come out and ask him? Oh, Danny, I could never do a thing like that, honest. Ah, how'd it go? He's a mighty tough audience for him. <laughs> but he promised me a rematch if I practice Mary Had a Little Lamb. Is he asleep? No, not yet. He says he never goes to sleep until his granddaddy goes up and kisses him goodnight. Well, his granddaddy will do that right now. Excuse me. Oh. Well, would you like some coffee, Frank? I'd love some. Oh, is it all right if I call you Frank? Of course it is. Oh. Well, here we are. Thank you. I'll get back there in a second. Oh. Frank. Yes, Captain. Oh. Well, would you like to sit in that chair next to the phone in case you get another phone call? Uh, Mrs. Williams. You, you mind if I call you Mrs. Williams? Oh. I get a funny feeling that you're curious, very curious about something, and I think it's right at the tip of your tongue, and I think you should tell me about it. What is it? Oh, well, there's nothing that I'm curious about. It, it's just that Danny was saying that, well, every red-blooded man in the country would give anything to live the life that you live. You mean to live the life they think I live? Oh, come on now, Frank, Bridget, Gina. And that's just two countries <laughs> on one continent. <laughs> Kathy, you really want to know something, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> Just between you and me. Oh, of course. of course. Now, usually, many men carry little black books, correct? Uh -huh. Not me. Not you? No. A computer. <laughs> A computer? Well, listen, I can't possibly keep track of the color of their hair and their eyes and their shape and size and figure, etc., etc. Consequently, the computer. Well, I guess it is better than a harem. Who told you about the harem? <laughs> Nobody really. It just, it just sort of started to come out. Listen, it came out. Yeah, it came out. Really, <laughs> a harem? May I have some more coffee, Captain? Uh, oh, yes, 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 of course. You oh, the same cup. <laughs> oh, Frank, come on. You're, you're just putting me on. Now, of course I was putting you on. Oh. Kathy, you gotta stop paying attention to the, all that junk they write in those gossip magazines. That's silly. I mean, if I really lived that kind of a life, I wouldn't be alive to live it. <laughs> don't you see? Yeah, I guess so, but I don't know. <laughs> you really made a hit with my grandson. He says you sing almost as good as I did. <laughs> oh, that thrills me. <laughs> Listen, kids, I gotta beat it. I'm... Sorry to have to eat and run and sing and talk, but uh, I want to do a few practice rounds in the morning, so I'm on my way to Palm Springs for that golf tournament. Hey, that's right. The Bob Hope Classic is this week. Hey, anyway, that's great. I yeah. got a thought. What? Why don't you play in it with me, come down there, spend the weekend at my house, and we'll have, you know. Really? Yeah. Hey, honey, would you mind to just be for a few days? A couple of days. A couple of days? Uh -huh. With him? You can call me Frank. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, do you mind? Well, no, I suppose not. Gee, thanks, honey. You Thank you for doing it, Kathy. I'll send a plane for you. Gee, thanks, buddy. Thanks again, Kathy. Oh. Hey, you know what? We'll have a ball. <laughs> to fight those stories about Dr. Pepper being medicine and all. But you're gonna beat those stories, kid. And when you do, I'm gonna be proud. Real proud. Dr. Pepper. When people try it, they like it. And for guys like we've got, that's what makes it all worthwhile. Today, your mouth can be whatever flavor you want. What flavor is yours? Lightsaber. Coconut. Wild cherry. Red, yellow. can make your mouth whatever flavor you want, from peppermint to mango. All it takes is a lifesaver, the candy with a hole in it. Hey, what flavor is yours? Tangerine. 
tangerine. What flavor is yours? I say that. Well, they say he's got a real great pad out there in that desert. I'll bet. Why are you taking glass? Could have a bathrobe. I know, but that flimsy little thing. <laughs> warm in Palm Springs. You're looking forward to this trip, aren't you? Sure am. Well, you should have a lot of fun with Frank and Palm Swing. That's right. <laughs> the Mount Hope Classic is a real fun thing. I've never seen you so anxious to go on a trip before. Yeah, I can, I can hardly wait to play. I'll bet you can. <laughs> Let's put them out of the way. What I call living. Didn't you forget something? I forgot to tip you. Francis, <laughs> uh, we split the tip. <laughs> being refreshed. Oh, I'd love a little refreshment. <sighs> mm. <laughs> <laughs> Rather warm, don't you think? Yes, it is a bit warm today. Oh, lovely. I would just say there's some food. Oh, oh I'd love to eat. That's that. you. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, what? You know, but I've never seen you play so badly in years. You were hitting the ball like Sarah said. <laughs> you got something worrying you? Something on your mind? Oh, oh, no, no. Nothing. Well, I'm glad because I wanted you to have a relaxed time down here the weekend. Okay? I'm having a good time. Now, how about we have something tall and cool? Tall? <laughs> Uh, look, 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 Frank, uh, about that. Look, I, I love my wife very much. Do you mean to say that you think that Kathy would resent me having a drink? <laughs> oh, a drink? Yeah, a drink. Tall and cool. Oh, that, oh, yeah, that'd be great. Henry. Yes, sir. Would you fix us something nice and tall and cool? Yes, sir. Okay. And listen, uh, when you get it done, put bring him back in here and you can have the night off. Thank you. <laughs> Why? Why what? Why, why, why are you giving them night off? <laughs> He's tired. Excuse me. Hello? Oh, hi, baby. <laughs> hey, I called you a few times, but you were never at home. Yeah, well, I'm just sitting around here talking to one of my chums, and we played some golf. We're going to have a little drink together. Oh, she with you? Oh, that's fine. Well, why don't you both come over? I haven't seen you in several days. I want to see you. Give us a couple of seconds to take a shower. Okay, baby. I love you. Frank, Frank. Look, I'm tired. I I I'm, I'm very tired. You know how tired I am? Too tired. For what? For when they come over. <laughs> now, Frank, look. Look, look. I, I appreciate the invitation. I'm, I'm flat. Who wouldn't be? I mean, spending a few days with you, you're a great guy, but... But look, Frank, I'm, I'm, I'm a very happily married man. I'm married. I'm married. Boy, am I married. I'm just beginning to fit all of the parts together. It's what happened today. Hmm. Would you rather I told the girls not to come over? Would you, please? Okay, but Tina and Nancy are going to be pretty disappointed. <laughs> Nancy, my daughter. Yes, my daughter. That's it. They called, yeah. You see, I haven't seen them in a few days, and we get together whenever we can. And you needn't worry. They were brought up very nicely. They won't attack you, Dad. <laughs> you know, I'll tell you something. You ought to attack me. Why? Because, man. Oh, I'm acting don't like a be fool. Silly. I'm ashamed. Don't be silly, Dad. Listen, I just wish that people would stop thinking that all I do in my life is run around with ladies all the time. I don't do that, not really. I don't. I mean, I've got a career I love. I love living in Palm Springs, playing golf. I love my art collection, my family, my friends. If I had all the activity going that people think I do have going, I'd weigh about 135 pounds. How much do you weigh? 134. <laughs> Lebanese Arnold Palmer. <laughs> how was the tournament? Oh, well, I, uh... Well, that's nice. And how are things with Frank? Oh, you just want to hear what happened to Frank, huh? Well, I'd rather hear it from you than read it in the paper. <laughs> yeah, I tell you what happened, you'll never believe it. That's much fun, huh? <laughs> oh, I hope so. You know, there's an old saying, what she doesn't know won't hurt her, but you don't want to live with that, right? You just want the ball truth, huh? Right. Well, I'm man enough to tell you. After the first day of golf, we got to his house. The butler served us a nice, tall, cool drink. And then the phone rang. It was a girl. Naturally. A beautiful, <laughs> net, gorgeous creature. His daughter, Tina. The girl that called was his daughter, Tina. Right. <laughs> sure it was. <laughs> and, and his daughter, Nancy, too. And he said, haven't seen you for a few days? Why don't you come over? They're a very close family. They really love their father and vice versa. They came over. We talked for a while. We played a little gin rummy. Then we watched the late show on television. And that was the great big ball I had at Sinatra's Pad. That's a very lovely story. Thank you. Good night. <laughs> with lunch, Dory. Oh, Jan, you should see what red wine does to my dentures. Don't you know about Ephrodent? Ephrodent? The tablet I use. Watch. 
it's turning blue. That means evidence bubbles are scrubbing away its stain and odor. When the blue disappears, dentures are clean. That's for me. <laughs> Thank you. I thought you were all red wine. Not since I got on to Everdent. <laughs> Everdent removes stubborn stains between teeth in minutes. Her first uncola. The moment in every girl's life when she leaves her childhood of one cola after another cola behind and begins a lifetime of the fresh, clean taste of 7-Up. I'm ready. <laughs> you really want to know the truth? I do. I'll tell you the truth. Good. Got there, and the place was full of beautiful girls, all dressed in bikinis, and there was nothing but hugging and kissing and kissing and hugging, and I had a ball. <laughs> now, that's better. Thank you very much. Good night. Two cups? Why are you pushing coffee so hard? Well, you know that taste test? The one where 45% of the people preferred instant Maxwell House coffee to the higher price freeze-dry? What about it? Well, I figure the more instant Maxwell House you drink, the more you save. <laughs> and you figure if I saved more money, I'd raise your allowance. Well, it won't work. It won't? <laughs> nope. That's funny. It just got me another dollar a week from Mom. <laughs> and I were such close friends in school. <laughs> Do you think I've changed since then? <laughs> How would I know, Mom? I didn't know you then. <laughs> I wonder if she has changed. I wonder if... Uh... Oh, there she is. Well, of course we've changed. After all, it's been... Uh... Please, no numbers. <laughs> oh, this must be Linda. Hello, Mrs. Carter. Hello. D did we once look like that? I don't know, but I hope I look as good as you and Mom when I... All that. Quit while we're ahead, huh? <laughs> oh, 
Lucy. It's so good to see you again. I can't tell you how thrilled I was when you called and said you were coming to town. Well, I can't tell you how thrilled I was when you said that I could stay here with you. You see, that way, we don't have to interrupt our gossiping by running back and forth from the hotel. <laughs> uh, are you sure it's all right with your husband? Oh, of course. As it happens, he's out of town. But I'm sure he would have been all for it. You mean I'm not even going to get to meet the lucky man? <laughs> I'm afraid not. He's doing a two-week engagement in Boston. Tell me, Kathy, what's he like? He's charming. He yells a lot. <laughs> and he's quite good-looking. And he yells a lot. <laughs> and he's the sweetest man you ever met. If you like a man who yells a lot. <laughs> well, between us, we've given you a pretty good description of Dan. And... Oh, I'd recognize him anywhere. He's, he's a handsome, charming fellow with a big mouth. <laughs> Do you ever see Sylvia Newton or um, uh, Helen Rivkin or Janet, uh, 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 the, the, the one with the, uh, the funny nose? Janet, what's her name? Oh, Robinson. Janet Robinson. Do you ever see those girls? Uh-oh, gossip time. I'm going to go upstairs and wash my hair. It's really nice to have you here, Mrs. Carter. Thank you, darling. You know, it's funny that you should mention Sylvia Newton. Why? I ran into her a couple of weeks ago. Yeah? Oh, you wouldn't recognize her. Now, she really has changed. Really? Oh, isn't that nice? <laughs> and you should see Helen Rifkin. What about her? Well, she dyes her hair. <laughs> she dyes her... You're putting me on. <laughs> oh, heaven's sake. I'm so glad. I've never had to do anything to mine. <laughs> Coffee. Say, Kathy, whatever happened to Mabel Cock and Locker? <laughs> but she's still trying to take off a couple of pounds. She ought to take a couple of pounds off that name. <laughs> you know, I just love this bedroom. It's done in such good taste. It's so, it's so feminine. Well, Danny wouldn't have it any other way. Come on, let me show you what he got me for our last anniversary. Oh, I'd love to see it. Oh, Kathy, isn't that gorgeous? Oh, good heavens. Just what you needed, another negligee. There must be 80 of them here. <laughs> what is he, Bluebeard or something? <laughs> Danny gives me negligees for all occasions, with a card reading, For Danny, From Danny. <laughs> oh, isn't that sweet? He says he really likes a girl to look like a girl. Uh -huh. If there's anything he can't stand, it's an unfeminine woman. Come on. Kathy, you are amazing. Oh, why do you say that? Well, here you are with a husband who likes feminine females, and he's in show business where he's surrounded by beautiful, young, feminine females. And you calmly let him go out of town without you. Well, I trust Danny. <laughs> well, that's what's so amazing. You know, my late husband wasn't what you'd call a swinger. But if he had been in show business like your Danny, he wouldn't have been able to make a move without bumping into me or one of my detectives. <laughs> I don't think Danny has ever looked at another woman since we've been married. You are kidding. No, I, I mean as a woman. Well, what did you do? Outfit him with a blindfold and a seeing eye dog? <laughs> just that we're just as crazy about each other as we were when we first met. I wouldn't risk spoiling that. Grandma, Grandma! Whoa, Grandma, what's that? Oh, well, it's um, my grandson, Michael. What's the matter with him? Well, he's been having nightmares lately. Oh. I'll look in on him. Besides, I'd better let you get to bed. You must be beat after your trip. Well, a little. Just point me in the direction of the guest room. <laughs> Why don't you stay in here? You'll be much more comfortable. Oh, no. I couldn't think of doing that. I don't want to take your room. No, really. I'll probably have to spend the night with Michael anyway. Are you sure? Yes, and... Well, to be honest with you, we're having a little trouble with the plumbing in the guest room. Oh, <laughs> well, in that case, okay. And thank you, dear. Uh, see you in the morning. In the morning? Yeah. Um, Kathy, I'll make a deal with you. What's that? In the morning, you don't look at me too hard, and I won't look at you. <laughs> You've got a deal. Okay, <laughs> thank you, dear. Good night. Good night. she trusts him. <laughs> Send him down.
I'm right over there, will you? Hey, be quiet. I'm surprising my wife. <laughs> Thanks for the ride. Thank you. You know, you've always been one of my favorite comedians. Oh, well, that deserves some of the I just love when, when you fold your arms and you say, Well! <laughs> they fall on the floor. <laughs> That'll cost you the extra. See, I'm the fellow who does this. And away we go. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Look, here you are. I was only kidding. I was too, Mr. Burrow. Bye. <laughs> And I hurried home. I thought I'd surprise you. And, and well, how was I supposed to know that wasn't you in that bed? Ha! <laughs> I'm talking about Linda. Oh, she's still in her room. Not say hello to her. How are things in Boston or something instead of just gimme, gimme, gimme? But you said that you'd consider raising my allowance as soon as you got back from Boston. I know, honey, I, but, but believe me, dear, this, this, this is not the best morning in the world for me to discuss money with anybody. Well, there goes a golden opportunity. Now, what's that supposed to mean? Well, I expected you to be so glad to see me, you'd be a pushover. I'm glad to see you. I'm glad to see you, but I got work to do. I got to write a whole arrangement by 3 o'clock this afternoon. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, wait, 
Yeah, Johnny. What's keeping you, dear? Your breakfast is getting cold. <laughs> I love you. Of course. Enough to trust me implicitly. You know I do. No matter where you find my fingerprints. Fingerprints? What are you talking about? There's somebody in our shower, and I have a feeling it's not the plumber. Of course. The shower head in the guest bathroom is gone, so I told Lucy to use ours. That's what I was afraid of. You mean? That wasn't you in the shower. Listen, I told Lucy you wouldn't look at another woman. You were right, I didn't look. You just have to explain it to her and hope she'll understand. Come on, your breakfast is getting cold. I know the only one for me could only be you. I aren't gonna free you. I can hear you very well from here. Sure, you believe me. It's all right. Won't you please come down? Word of honor? Word of honor. <laughs> <laughs> now, look, Lucy. I mean, uh, before in the shower. Believe me, it was an accident. I really didn't mean to. <laughs> I'll just take off my sweater. You will take off nothing. <laughs> okay, okay. Then you, you, you take off your... I'll do nothing of the sort. <laughs> We're not just going to stand here like this all day, if you don't mind. Let me see if I just give it a little tug here. Thank you. Oh. Area code 
874. Uh, the number is 555-8962. Yes, I, I, I'd like to speak to Mary Jane Lewis. Thank you. <laughs> Hello? Hello, Mary Jane? This is Lucy. Mary Jane, can you pick me up at the airport this evening? I know I was supposed to be here two more days, but... I've run into a little problem. Yeah, a problem named Danny Williams. That's right. My friend Kathy's husband. He's crazy about me. Well, no, he didn't exactly tell me that, but actions speak louder than words. And brother, have I seen action these past few days. Yeah, well, the thing that bothers me is the fact that he, he may never get over me. Well, if I could just think of some way to uninfatuate him and, and save poor Kathy's marriage. <laughs> no, no, she doesn't know anything about it yet. Although she should have had some suspicions because she was, she was telling me how he liked very feminine women. And, you know, I, I, I've had that trouble all my life. <laughs> hey, Mary Jane. Mary Jane, I think I know how to uninfatuate him. Look, don't bother to pick me up at the airport. I'll call you again. Bye-bye. mind my boring some of your things, more my style for hanging around the house. <laughs> not at all, not at all. How's the boy? Fine, fine. Uh, hey, that stogie smells good. Got another one? Uh, no. Go. Good, good, good. good. Ah, hell boy. <laughs> <laughs> Great. <laughs> hey, sit down. I got a great story to tell you. <laughs> Did you ever hear the one about the two guys in the steam room? <laughs> huh? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I know that one. Yeah, the real scorcher, ain't it? <laughs> hey, listen. Did you catch a Henderson Kid McCoy fight? No, 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 I didn't. Oh, it was a beaut. Oh. Yeah, especially in the third round. The kid came out swinging. <laughs> and really letting them have it. Oh, boy. He was in... Ah! Darling, I'm terribly sorry about all this. Uh, it, it was all so perfectly innocent. Uh, just one of those things. Nothing for you to worry about. Goodbye, dear. Goodbye, Lucy. Watch him like a hawk. <laughs> gone? Thank goodness for that. Now, listen, Clancy. I mean, you do believe me, don't you? I mean, it was all just perfectly innocent, pure accident. I mean, the, the bed, the shower, and what you thought was smooching and everything was nothing. You, know, you do believe me, don't you, dear? I believe you. That quickly? Why not? Well, I like that. What am I, Jojo the dog face boy? It's possible, you know. I mean, she's a very attractive feminine woman, and, and I may be a grandfather, but I'm not embalmed yet. <laughs> If I ever catch you in the shower with a woman again... Yeah? It had better be me. 
With every sigh, I become more mad about you. So lost without you. And so it goes. Can you imagine how much I'd love you? Goodbye, I know the only one for me could only be my arm won't free you, my heart won't Club owners got up this early. You, uh, I had to do a little shopping. Is your father up yet? Toys for Dad? Yeah. No, 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 for Michael. Uh, is, is your father in a good mood? Daddy, in a good mood at 9 o'clock in the morning? I know what you mean. Morning, Charlie. Oh, hi, Kath. What a surprise. 
And Linda, your breakfast is getting cold. Oh, okay, Mom. How did you get in? Through the door or down the chimney? No, no, no. I just had to pick up a few toys. Is Danny up yet? I don't know. He was still sleeping when I got up. Sit down, Charlie. I'll tell him you're here. No, no, no. D don't, don't wake him up. I, I can wait. What are the toys for? They're for Michael. Well, his birthday is until next month. Kathy, I figure this way. When a man brings over toys for another man's grandson, it would be pretty odd for the other man to say no to the nice man who brought over the toys for the grandson. I'll give you ten dollars if you can say that again. When a man brings Never over... mind, Charlie. What is it you don't want Daddy to say no? Give me up, give me up. Give me up, give me up. All right, all right, take it easy. The old gray Mary, what you used to be in... Hiya, Dan. <laughs> You walking in your sleep, or did you stay up all night? <laughs> Kathy, I ask you, is that a picture? Nothing, nothing in this world is more beautiful than a man with a grandson on his back. I <laughs> only stayed up all night, but he's been drinking, too. You <laughs> <laughs> so drunk, you did your Christmas shopping a little early, didn't you? I, I just picked up a few toys for Michael. <laughs> oh, boy! Hey, come over here and see what I brought for little Michael. Hey, a regular football outfit. Helmet. Let me put the shoulder pads on you. Well, 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 what's the occasion? Huh? I don't know. Ask the fairy godmother. <laughs> oh, uh, fairy godmother. Huh? It's not his birthday. What's the occasion? Occasion? Does there have to be an occasion to buy a little boy a present? <laughs> no, no. That's really very nice of you. Now, what is it you want my grandson to ask me that I'm going to say no to? <laughs> what is? I didn't even ask a question. You know what you're going to. Uh, and, oh, and, and here's the football that goes with it, Michael. Oh, yeah. boy! Grandma, can I go show these to Johnny? Yes, honey, but don't play in the elevator. Oh, boy, my own uniform! Gee, thanks, Uncle Charlie. <laughs> How long have you been married to me? A coffee coming right up. Thanks a lot. <laughs> okay, Charlie, what's on your mind? What's cooking? Well, a, a wonderful thing happened. Yeah, what? Diana Hendricks is going to play the club. Diana Hendricks? Yep. You got Diana Hendricks? Yep. Did you hear that? He got Diana Hendricks. Oh, Charlie, that's marvelous. Yeah. It's got a book for a two-week engagement. Oh, she killed it. The people broke all records in Vegas. Mm -hmm. Uncle Charlie! Uncle Charlie, is it true? Did you really get Diana Hendricks? Yeah. I don't believe it. I love her. I just love her. I have every one of her albums she ever made. Oh, wait till I tell the kids at school. I've got to call Marie. Yeah. <laughs> hey, that's some kind of book, and how'd you arrange it? Oh, it just took a wild shot. I figured, what have I got to lose? So I called her manager, and she just happened to have two weeks free. That's great. But I bet he made you pay through the nose, right? Oh, no, it wasn't that bad. He just asked for the earth, the moon, solo billing, a percentage of the gross, and I said yes. <laughs> What's the matter? I'll tell you what's the matter. They asked for solo billing, which means my name comes down and her name is out on the marquee in front. Oh. And my dear friend said yes to that. The phony with the toys for the kid. Danny, Danny, I couldn't help it. I fought, I argued, I begged. So beg a little harder. You're all right. Please, Danny. <laughs> Not me, her. Oh, Kathy, please. Her, her. Oh, you get out of here. Mr. Santa Claus. Ooh, the little boy in the pretty field. Phony. I'll kill him. <laughs> oh, oh, hi. 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 Yeah, nice picture, isn't it? Oh, it's lovely. I like the bigger one out in front, too. Danny, please. What, please? What happened to my picture? Well, yeah, yeah. Look, I agreed you could take my name off the marquee, but my picture, too? Her, her manager insisted. Oh, he did. Would it be all right if I put my little passport picture up? <laughs> Danny, you promised to be nice and friendly and pleasant. I just broke my promise. Danny, I beg of you, please don't do anything to upset this engagement. This could be a big break for me. She doesn't play regular clubs, only Vegas and Tahoe and concerts. So after she finishes at my club, I can get any headliner. Danny, I beg of you, don't blow your top. All right, okay. And when the announcer says, ladies and gentlemen, here is the star of our show, Miss Diana Hendricks. I want these house lights down and pick her up with your spotlight on stage right. What's that? Rehearsal already? Full rehearsal. She's a real pro. Yeah, uh, uh, you're a real pro. <laughs> Ooh, <thank> you. <laughs> Yeah. 
is this? You! You, the idiot up there that's supposed to be a light man. Look, it may come as news to you, but Miss Diana Hendricks is the star of the show, not the band. Put that light on her and keep it there. What do you want? Huh? Oh, yeah, oh, I, 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 I just want to take this opportunity to uh, introduce Miss Hendricks to a friend of mine who will share the bill with her. Miss Hendricks, I, I'd like to have you meet... Look, Shorty, nobody disturbs Miss Hendricks when she's rehearsing. All right, guys, take ten. What does he do? <laughs> uh, uh, he, we, he tells a few stories, sings a few songs, does uh, no singing. He does uh, uh, what? No singing. <laughs> oh, no, but it's different from the way she... Uh, nobody sings on the same stage Miss Hendricks works on. How long is his act? Oh, he's, he's hilarious! He kills the people, they love him! <laughs> How many minutes does he do? About 35. Too long. <laughs> We'll listen to his material later and tell you what we want cut. Oh, and by the way, Miss Hendricks' dressing room is too small. We'll take the big one. Uh, uh sir, uh, the, the big one is, is my room. I know. We'll send our decorator in in the morning. Is there anything else you want? Gordon? Uh, yes? Who's gonna walk my dog? Well, he's not doing anything. Uh, oh, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll, be, I'll be glad to. Charlie, hold it! What is this? You forgive me for addressing you, Your Majesty, but Mr. Halper here happens to be a very successful nightclub owner. He does not walk dogs. Now, wait a minute. No, you wait a minute. Let me tell you something else, young lady. It is very polite when you are speaking to a person to speak to that person, not at that person through a third person. And since this loudmouth here represents you and you permit him to behave the way he does, I take it he speaks for you. So I'll speak for Mr. Halper. It certainly goes without saying that you are a great artist. I'll give you that. You're great. But you are first and foremost a very rude, inconsiderate, disrespectful, insulting, reprehensible, arrogant, inconsiderate human being. And then I walked out. You mean she actually wanted Charlie to walk her dog? Yeah, and if he did, I'll kill him. Anybody got a dog they want walked? <laughs> you didn't. Of course I didn't. How could I after your Declaration of Independence? And in the second place, I'm afraid of dogs in the first place. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry if I got you in a jackpot, Charlie. There's nothing to be sorry about, Dan. I was proud of you. Real proud. I was so proud I told her you're going to do your whole act. You did? Yep. Right after she quit. <laughs> Yeah, she said she quits unless Danny apologizes. Me apologize? She should apologize to me. That's what I told her. Well, I'm sure happy to hear you say that, pal. Because for a minute there, I thought maybe you'd come over to ask me to do the apologizing. Oh, Danny, how could you say a thing like that? Oh, I admit, losing her would cost the club a lot of prestige and reputation. 
But do you think I trade all that for our friendship? Never. No, uh, never. I, I gotta run now. I got a lot of work to do. I gotta take her name off the marquee. See you, Kevin. Charlie, huh? Thanks for backing me up. No thanks, Mr. Sir. And Danny, one more thing. I don't want you to feel guilty about this. nice of Charlie to come over and tell me not to feel guilty about it. Yes, it was nice. So how come I feel guilty about it? Probably because you know how much it meant to him. Yeah. I guess it would mean a lot for a star like Dan Hendricks to play his club that way. Other big headliners that play for him, too. Look, so she's not the nicest person in the world. I can put up with that for a couple of weeks. apologize to her. But you don't even know where she lives. She lives at 637 East 63rd Street. <laughs> Dan Hendricks, please. Huh? This is Dan Hendricks' apartment, isn't it? Well, well, yes, it is. Well, is she at home? Yes. Well, would you tell her Danny Williams would like to see her, please? Well, uh, are you sure you'd like to see her after what happened today? Oh, well, she tell you about that? Well, sort of. Yes, that's that's what I'd like to see her about. Well, maybe if you told me, I could tell her for you. Are you related to Miss Hendricks? I'm a sister. Well, if you don't mind, I'd, I'd rather tell her myself. Well, if you'd rather. Come on in, Mr. Williams. Thank you. Well, a lovely apartment. She has excellent taste. Thank you. Can I uh, get you something? No, no, thank you. Would you like uh, half of my sandwich? No, thank you. It's peanut butter and banana. It's real good. <laughs> I'm sure it is. I've already had my lunch. Thank you. Uh, well, make yourself comfortable. Thank you. Uh, what does reprehensible mean? Hmm? You know uh, what you called her today? Oh, you mean reprehensible? Yeah. <laughs> she really told you all about it, didn't she? Yeah, what does that mean? Well, when someone does something that's not very nice, uh, it's reprehensible, and they deserve to be blamed for it. Oh. Well, excuse me. Sure. You know, I, I bet you wouldn't think she was so bad if you knew why she acts the way she does. I would. Hey, look, see, we were from a, a big family, and we were sort of not very rich. And um, she being the oldest, she had to go out to work to help out. Yeah, yeah. And, and poverty excuses all. You get pushed around when you're poor, and so when you get a little money, you start pushing back just to get even. <laughs> Honey, I've heard that story a hundred times. No, see, I don't think you understand, Mr. Believe Lee. me, dear, I do understand. And I think it's just beautiful. You're sticking up for your sister like that, but could I see her, please? Well, she's in the bath, and it, it, it might take a while. I'll wait. Okay. <laughs> Little sister said you wanted to see me. Very charming girl, your sister. That couldn't be what you came here to see me about. No. No, it isn't. <laughs> no, I, I can't get over it. I mean, you being the way you are and that sweet child being the way she is. Oh, that's what you came here to see me about, to insult me again. No, no, no. I came here to do a friend of mine a favor. To apologize to you for what happened at the club today. I was just going to say I'm sorry and, and leave, but 
after talking to your sister, she live with you? Yes. Look, Miss Hendricks, I don't know why you feel you have to act the way you do, but that kid living with you, I mean, you're a cinch to rub off on her, and that's not going to be very good for her. Now, why don't you give her a chance in life? Let her learn to like people and have them like her. Yet she'd be a lot happier that way, caring for people, people caring for her rather than dominating and pushing all the time. I guarantee you that's much more important in life even than being top dog. Give her a break, Miss Hendricks. She's a sweet child. Let her learn to like and be liked. Oh, I apologize. Not for what I just said, but for what happened at the club. Good afternoon. All right, all right. Will you stop beefing, Rosie, and let's get on with this rehearsal? Look, Danny. I know you apologize to Diana for the good of the show, but if that manager of hers puts down my piano playing one more time, I'm going to lean on him. <laughs> if I can live with it, so can you. So forget all about leaning on him. Okay. You're the boss. Fine. I won't lean on him. Good. Until after the engagement. All right. <laughs> you're wild. You're a wild man. Mr. Williams? Huh? Hi. Could, could I see you from there, Mr. Williams? Sure, honey. Take five, Rosie. All right. <laughs> well, what brings you here? What can I do for you? Well, it's about my sister. Oh. What about your sister? Well, you remember what you said about her pushing people around just to get even? Yeah. Well, it's not like that at all. It isn't? No, you see, she had to drop out of school when she was in ninth grade, and it's always bothered her that she never got a chance to get a real education. And, and she felt like... Like everybody was so much smarter and she didn't know anything. Yeah, how'd you know? <laughs> I've been there, honey. Only with me, it was the eighth grade. Really? Yep. Oh, would you like a sandwich? No, thanks. We got peanut butter and banana here, too, you know. <laughs> no, thanks. I had mine. Yeah, I was an eighth grade dropout. And uh, I felt like I was the ignoramus of the Western world. And I started covering it up by... Pushing too hard and leaning on people and playing it big. You scare them before they scare you. Exactly. You feel less than everybody else, so you try to act like you're more. And uh, that's the way it is with Diana. And she's unlucky enough to find a manager who not only condones her actions, but encourages them, huh? I guess so. But look at uh, if it's her education that's bugging her, why don't you do something about it? Well, like what? Get a private tutor. She certainly can afford one. And that way she can get a high school education. You see, Mr. Williams, she... She tried it a couple of times, but... The tutors always knew who she was, and... She knew that they knew, and... It got to be sort of embarrassing for them to know that I was such a dummy. And, and I started covering up, and... And I just could never make it work. You said... I was such a dummy. I couldn't make it work. I, you said, I. I gotta be going. Now, oh, wait a minute. Diana? Yes? Holy Toledo. It is you. But... You look like a 15-year-old kid. Certainly not a day over 16. I'm over 16, Mr. Williams. Goodbye. Diana, wait. Look, I got a wild idea. But first, I got to ask you something. Do you really like the other Diana? I mean, the way she acts. Do you, you like that? I hate it. You come here, young lady. Now, you sit down. Now, here's my wild idea. You really want that education, don't you? Real bad. Badly. <laughs> okay. You're going back to high school. I'm going back to high school? Right. That's really a wild idea. No way. What do you mean, no way? Why not? It'll never work. Of course it'll work. You fooled me, didn't you? And you'll fool them. Nobody will ever know it's you. 
So at night, you're the glamorous star, Diana Hendricks. In the daytime, you're a high school kid, uh, Daisy Snodgrass. <laughs> It'll work. Do you think we'll get away with it? Yeah, I know we will. We're gonna need some help. Rosie? Hey, big Rosie, come out of here a minute, will you? Daisy Snodgrass? <laughs> say that test was going to take? I don't know. I made my speech and I hightailed it out of that principal office so fast. You'd think I was one of his students. <laughs> but, but, but he bought it, huh? The story you told him, he bought that. Oh, yeah, he bought it. Hook, line, and sinker. I told him a story so sad that he and I both were crying. <laughs> but you know what really made it work? Why? She looked exactly like a little girl from out of town whose school had burned down with all the records. <laughs> It worked. It worked, Rosie. You, oh. you, you don't have to tell me. You passed the test. Not only did I pass the test, but I skipped. I'm in the 10th grade, Danny. The 10th the grade. The 10th grade? That's <laughs> wonderful. Oh, that's really great. Oh, I'm proud of you. Proud of you. Hey, hold it. What's going on? Why aren't you guys rehearsing? Uh, out, little girl. Out, out. <laughs> Please, Mr. Helper, don't be so reprehensible. <laughs> She enrolled, she tested, and they accepted her. Yeah, yeah, she fooled the principal. But all of a sudden, I'm worried about those kids. You know, if she doesn't fool them, I, I'm, I'm dead. Because if one of them finds out who she really is and gets out, it'll, it'll look like a bad publicity stunt, and I'll be doing more harm than good. Well, if they ever find out that Daisy Snodgrass is really Diana Hendricks, well... Daisy Snodgrass? <laughs> what do you want? It, it happened so fast, it was all I could think of. Hi, Daisy. Oh, hi, Dad. Hi, Mom. I'd like you to meet a new friend of mine. Huh? She just came to our school, and I'm a big sister. <laughs> Daisy, my parents. Oh, wow. do. Hi. Mr. Williams, my mom and dad are big fans of yours. Oh. <laughs> oh, I forgot to tell you. You know who he's working with this week? Diana Hendricks. Really? Yeah. Dad, can I meet her? Can I please? If, if I don't, I'll just die. I'll lay down and die. All right, all right. You don't have to lay down and die. Uh, we will invite her to dinner before she closes. Oh, that's fantastic. Isn't it great? Hey, can Daisy come too? Oh, <laughs> wouldn't think of having the dinner without her. Oh, isn't that great? Come on, Daisy. I want to play you Diana's latest album. <laughs> 